Hi, I'm Sarah Aziz. I am the director of the Dollar Bank Three Rivers Arts Festival and the director of festival management for the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust. I am so thrilled to be here with Stephen Bennett and Dr. Elaine Malati Schmidt and the Bennett Prize. And I've also got Patrick Moore here. He is the director of the Andy Warhol Museum. And now I'm going to turn it over to Stephen to talk about round one of the Bennett Prize. Stephen? Thank you, Sarah. The Rising Voices uh, exhibition is an exhibition of the work of 10 women finalists, the finalists for the Bennett Prize, which is, as you know, an art prize awarded to figurative realist women painters on a biannual every two year basis. And the show that is opened in Pittsburgh at the 937 gallery, uh, sponsored by the Cultural Trust, uh, showcases the work of the 10 women painters who were finalists for the first iteration of the prize, which was announced in May of 2019. Uh, it also includes uh, work from the first prize winner, Annika Ingold, who was the winner of that prize. And people often say to us, uh, why do we uh, bother with the prize? What are its aims? And what our experience was as collectors was that uh, there were far fewer exhibitions of art by women, fewer pieces in major collections. And when women's pieces were collected, they were generally sold for less, significantly less than the amount that uh, competent and similar men would sell for. So through the prize, we hoped to create interest in women as painters and interest in women as figurative realists and increase the likelihood that these individuals and the genre in which they're working would receive uh, critical recognition and appreciation by the public. And so those were basically our aims, but our goals were a little more specific. Doc, do you want to talk about the goals? <laughs> well, our overall mission is to propel the career of women figurative painters who have not realized their full professional recognition as we have defined it. Um, but that mission can really be broken down into two goals. And that first would be one of promoting women uh, at gender equity. And slowly, I would probably say in the last five or 10 years, women in the arts have been making slow but steady progress in this realm. There are more women on boards for museums. There are more women in professional museum positions. Um, La Louvre and Tate both now have women directors. So um, progress is happening slowly, incrementally moving in the right direction. About two weeks ago, I think, um, Sotheby's held its first ever women's artists across the centuries auction. We actually tried to participate and we were outbid. And that was what happened for most of the pieces in the auction. Um, it outperformed their estimates by $3.7 million for the end everybody was just thrilled. Um, also, Except those of us who lost. <laughs> that's true. I really <laughs> liked this painting and it went for about three times what the top estimate was. Um, and then museums are, are becoming more aware, not just, I would say, of including women in their uh, collections. And Patrick, you can, well, you're, you're in a special case, but you know about museum directors. I mean, I think everybody's <laughs> trying to include more people from their community, as long as it can relate to their museum mission. And for instance, um, the Baltimore Museum of Art recently concluded a year where they only collected works by women. Um, they added 13 pieces to their collection. Now, if it's like going on a diet where you're good for a week, but don't change what you eat for the rest of your life, um, it doesn't make the kind of change that all of us ho are hoping for, but it's, it's a very good start. Um, the second part of our prize is to really um, focus on figurative realism and to provide opportunities for the public to learn more about figurative realist paintings, um, how broad-based it has become and really 
it has a contemporary flair to it, and about um, the vision, the incredible visions of the women who work in this genre. So Patrick, can you talk to us a little bit about figurative realism and how it fits in the larger canon, and particularly how it's viewed contemporarily? Sure, I'd be happy to. And thanks to the Pittsburgh Foundation for hosting today. And, uh, you know, I was with Steve and Elaine in Michigan, what, a few weeks back uh, for the prize. And I have to say, it was an incredibly powerful and meaningful experience to see uh, not only how much it meant to the winner of the prize, but that entire group of women who really, I think you all would agree with me, bonded together and supported one another and showed respect for one another's work. So it was an incredibly validating experience for them and quite a moving one for me. So thank you for that. In terms of figurative realism, this is not a new activity or a new art movement. One could argue that uh, cave paintings uh, begin the trend towards figurative realism. Uh, and why? Why are people, artists, so obsessed with this idea of representing the human figure? And why are we as viewers so taken with this work? And I think it's because we all look to identify with art. It's uh, the great challenge of abstract art. Many people have said that in abstraction, what people do is that they first look for a figure in the canvas. They try to identify a figure within the abstraction. And I think that it's our natural impulse as human beings to uh, gaze on another human figure and identify and to connect. Uh, that does not mean, however, that figurative realism has always had an easy time of it. And I would say that there was a long period of time starting in the 50s especially, and then moving into the 60s, um, and even a bit into the 70s, where figurative realism was out of favor, as it were. Um, that is combined with what you all have been talking about, which is uh, the idea of women, and women being able to represent themselves in figurative realism. I think that that started to change a lot in the 80s, and that figurative realism has held steady since then. And I always look to artists like Marilyn Minter, who not only uh, portrays the female body, but portrays it in a way that is powerful. Some might even say abject or slightly violent. So I think that figurative realism has moved from something that is uh, about beauty in the more traditional sense and moved into a kind of more complex phase where we are now looking at uh, figures of women portrayed by women and maybe portrayed in a way that we didn't exactly expect. So uh, it's a trajectory, but I think that we're in a much healthier and longstanding phase for figurative realism at the moment. Patrick, did you, uh, I know you spent a lot of time with the, uh... Uh, the works in the uh, second iteration of the prize, but you've had a chance to look at the at the work being uh, displayed in the uh, round one show. Uh, did you have some that uh, caught your eye or that were uh, remarkable to you? I was particularly drawn to Stephanie Jackson. And as we can see, Stephanie is a, a talented technical painter, but you know, I've long believed that artists play this special role in our society. They are also documentarians around moments of crisis. Um, I started this kind of uh, work with artists in the 1980s around the AIDS crisis. And I believe that, you know, for me, as a gay man in New York City in the 1980s, I could read the headlines in the New York Times about AIDS but really only the work of artists captured the emotions of that moment. And I think that Stephanie is working on something sort of similar here. Uh, you know, Stephanie lives in Athens, Georgia, I believe, but a lot of her work um, relates to Detroit, uh, relates to social justice and moments that are these moments of incredible conflict. And these paintings, I think, 
capture the sort of chaos of time passing, the different figures. And these are all not all uh, kind of laudatory figures. You also have figures that are abject in these um, pictures. So, uh, you know, some of Stephanie's work looks at the Atlanta race riots, the destruction of New Orleans by uh, Hurricane Katrina, uh, public housing in Detroit and New Orleans. So this idea of Stephanie making a beautiful painting, but also a painting that captures a moment that we're in in America, which is really um, one of conflict and transformation. I, I might also talk uh, slightly, if we have time, about Mary Henderson's work. In some ways, a more traditional representation, um, a more kind of polished painter. But I love also the ambiguity of these paintings. You know, we could be at a rock concert, we could be at a ball game, or we really could be in the middle of a protest. And we know that there have been so many of them over the past few years in America. So I think that it also captures this idea of, and, and let's look at the faces here. Uh, it, we're in an America that in some way is a kind of utopian America, uh, races, sexes, uh, types of people, eight different ages of people are mixed together. But again, there's a slight uneasiness because we can't really understand the context. But what I'm getting from these paintings is the emotional charge of the last few years that we've gone through in the United States. It, it's really true. I, the vacuous backgrounds are very striking to me. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that's interesting is there's this thing that bounces back and forth between the focus on the individual, uh, like this woman uh, in the painting on the upper left, uh, uh, you can kind of sense her excitement or her absorption in yeah. this event that she's watching or participating in. And these two women in the painting on the right who are absorbed in their own conversation. So you have these individual worlds and then you have the, the massive crowd uh, that subsumes them. And I thought Mary's work was quite striking in that way. Yeah, very beautiful. Uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we looked at the show, we, we thought that uh, every one of these was extraordinary. I think, you know, one of the painters we spent a lot of time talking about was Kira Nam Green. She does these kind of... Uh, pop psychedelic figures that are just so spectacular. Uh, and I, I do hope the people in Pittsburgh have a chance to see this show because there's so much to it. There's Kira's work and uh, uh, I, I just find that work striking. It has such a, uh, this is visual electricity uh, for us, I think. And uh, uh, we just had a giveaway and Sun with a Beach Ball was part of the giveaway with that we did online to keep uh, people thinking about the prize and women figurative realists and so forth. Kira is a really lovely person uh, and uh, a great painter, as you can see. And uh, her work has a vibrancy to it that uh, is very attractive. Well, and Patrick, I think it's interesting what you said about figures, because she told us she used to only paint at the extract part, the backgrounds. And then about three years ago, she decided to start to add figures because it's way more interesting and her work sold better. Well, it, it shows, doesn't it? Because the, the patterning almost subsumes the figure and there's a kind of tension that comes from that. Um, I, I think especially in Renee, uh, it's, it's beautiful. And there's a kind of, um, well, you could read all sorts of things into it. You know, our culture, our visual culture, some seem, sometimes seems to subsume us in a way. And in these pictures, I think that's true. So Patrick, Steve often says that women figurative realists suffer from gender discrimination and genre discrimination, uh, which is his reflection on the notion that contemporary art seems to favor 
abstract expressionism rather than figurative works. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And do you see attitudes towards figurative realism changing? Well, let's start with the gender before we start with the genre. And <laughs> Elaine, you know, you put your finger on it. There has been improvement, but I don't think the improvement is as much as we might have hoped for or thought it was. And, you know, when I thought we were going to talk today, when I was uh, looking at a few things, um, I looked at the work of some buddies of mine called the Gorilla Girls, who I'm oh, sure yes. you're familiar with. And they did a poster in 2012, which is just fantastic. It's a nude figure with a gorilla mask on. And the headline is, do women have to be naked to get into the Met Museum? And I was just at the Met a few weeks ago and went to see the Alice Neal show, which is extraordinary and shows that this type of work should have been recognized long before um, because it was really important from a technical side and also from a social side. When we come to the genre aspect of it, you know, the art world has its opinions and the art world has its trends. And I think that there has long been a, a kind of convergence of snottiness in the art world when it comes to uh, realism, representation and work done by women artists, uh, because the work has to be just right for the art world to accept it. It can't be too emotional. It can't be too beautiful. It can't be this, it can't be that. There's a much broader spectrum of acceptance in the art world when it comes to a male artist where we can kind of construct this heroic persona around them. Uh, you know, unless you're Georgia O'Keeffe or Tracy Emin or somebody who's been able to construct a rather kind of forceful and rough persona, I still think that there is this feeling of um, in the art world, well, it's kind of on the periphery. It has to be just right or else it feels amateurish. So for sure, we are still dealing with discrimination, both in the areas of gender and genre. So I think that's well said. Um, but I do think that we are seeing an openness to more work and more different kinds of work from women. And uh, we hope to be part of that. That's our. You already goal. are a part of it. So thank <laughs> you for what you're doing. We hope to be part of it. And uh, Sarah. Hi, hi guys. Hi. 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 Well, the next question goes to you. Welcome. Um, Thanks for having me. Well, as a curator and a person of influence, you're in a unique position uh, to help elevate women artists. Given that hope, what, if anything, about women artists being fully celebrated and compensated for in their work do you see pending? What is your hope? What is my hope? Well, obviously, I hope that women are equally compensated to men. Um, you know, I was... I, I am a woman, so I would I would like to be equally compensated. Um, I was raised by some feminists. Um, you know, my my both of my parents, my mom and my dad, equally are are feminists and raised me to believe that you know women should be raised uh, paid equally. And so it's been. And I went to a women's college. I graduated from Mount Holyoke. So I mean, I've I've really been indoctrinated. This is nothing new to me. Um, I've loved the Gorilla Girls since I was a kid. I thought they were super cool. I remember seeing them in the Tate Modern when I was, you know, I don't know, 12 or 13 and being like, yes, I like, I like this art. Um, so I, I started the anthropology of motherhood um, was one of the, it was, it was a, a project that I piloted at the 2016 Dollar Bank Three Rivers Arts Festival. And we started it as a artful room where, or artful space where mothers could nurse and change their kids. And it has since developed into, um, it's still that, it's still a feeding room, but it is, it's very artful this year. We had um, 
I can't remember how, I think we had like 45 applicants and we showed the work of 20 artists in the space, um, all women artists, all, you know, sort of centered around mothering and the culture of care. The curator, um, Fran Flaherty, really centers around the culture of care um, and what that means and um, just sort of raising that importance that, you know, um, we take so many of the things that women do in society for granted, just, you know, it just happens, you know, mom's just always there. Um, and so making that experience a central part of the festival and artful was really important. And we just had our sixth iteration and, um, and that's been really rewarding and really, you know, most of the artists that I have curated and, and, brought to the Three Rivers Arts Festival have been women. Um, and that has been intentional. You know, some, some folks are like, oh, does that just happen? Cause you know, you bring work and it's like, no, no way. No, I meant to bring work by women. I, you know, I, it's not all by women. You know, I, I brought work by men as well, but um, I think it's really important to show that work, to highlight it, to talk about it, to talk about the inequities and to talk about the fact that we all need to work together um, to, you know, make everybody in, in an equitable place. I wanted to ask, uh, as the as the curator of the festival, is there, and as speaking to us as collectors, uh, we're interested in some of the women that you're focusing on. Would you like to talk about or bring to uh, the uh, our attention as collectors and the audience? Uh, people that you're featuring in the show? Sure. I mean, yeah, we have, we have a lot of artists in, in our market um, who are women. That is a little trickier. I will tell you um, both the market and the jury show are blind um, applications. Yeah. And so I know, you know, that's, that's always tricky in terms of how do you balance um you know, black artists or indigenous artists, women artists, um, when when you don't necessarily know, right? And so, um, we've we've talked a lot about how we advertise those calls and to whom we advertise those calls. Um, I'm really proud of the work of the hashtag Not White Collective that's in space right now. If you guys um, have a chance to see their work. It's incredible. And the, the show that's in space right now, that's called decolonizing. Sp we are the global majority decolonizing space. Um, they paired up with each of the members of the collective selected another artist to be part of that show. So there's 30 artists, um, in that show right now. They're, they're not all local to Pittsburgh, but a lot of them are. Um, and I, I believe they are all femme artists um, and, and I'm really, I'm really proud of, of that, of that work as well. Well, you know, I think the fact that you're conducting a, uh, an important arts festival in Pittsburgh, uh, is a compliment to both the, the progressivity of Pittsburgh and to, uh, the commitment of Pittsburgh uh, to the arts, and uh, that's attractive to us. And as you know, we are uh, co-sponsors. Our co-sponsors, one of them is the Pittsburgh Foundation, and we're very grateful for all this cool stuff, including <laughs> including yeah. your festival and Patrick's museum. We're very grateful for all that great stuff that's going on. It's it's very cool. And, and I will tell you, Pittsburgh has always supported the arts. I mean, we're all, we're sort of like known outside of Pittsburgh as a sports city, right? Everybody's like, oh, you're from Pittsburgh. Do you like the Steelers? And you're like, yeah, man, I like the Steelers. But, you know, we sell more tickets in the cultural district than all the sports teams combined. And everybody in Pittsburgh, you know, we have this world-renowned symphony. We've got a ballet and an opera company that have been around for years, like, we, and obviously we have the Carnegie and the Warhol and, you know, all these, the mattress factory, lots of visual arts um, programs. But I'll tell you, we did not know what to expect from this festival this year coming out of the pandemic. Um, the restrictions were just lifted literally the first day of the festival. So we, we really had no idea. And we had artists in the market 
every single artist I spoke to said that this was a great show. Some of them said there was a woman, um, well, I can't think of her first name, but her it's wax and filter ceramic. She said she had the best show she's ever had in her life. And she's, she's a grandma. Um, I know that because I know, I know a lot of the artists. I know her grandchild was born two years ago at the 2019 festival. Um, but I mean, lots of folks said, you know, Pittsburgh came out and bought art and bought big pieces. You know, there were people walking around with, with big, you know, wrapped artwork. Um, I think some of that speaks to the fact that everyone's been kind of staring at their walls for a year and a half. And I think people were ready, <laughs> were ready for some new art on their walls, but Pittsburgh also really supports art and artists and, and we're, we're proud of that. Thank you all uh, so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you uh, for being with us, both of you. Uh, uh, Thank you, Patrick. And thank you, Sarah. It's a pleasure uh, to have been with you today. Uh, Elaine and I would also especially like to thank Murray Horn at the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust and his team who helped make the exhibition of the uh, Bennett Prize uh, 1.0 Rising Voices show possible. Uh, we also want to thank the uh, Pittsburgh Foundation for co-organizing and co-sponsoring the prize with us and uh, the Muskegon Museum of Art. All these people are great partners and they've uh, created a uh, deep and abiding warm spot in our hearts for our uh, many friends in Pittsburgh. Uh, I think we also would like to thank the trusts, uh, the Cultural Trust marketing team for uh, putting this uh, discussion together and for taking some amazing shots of the installation, which we had a chance to see. Uh, certainly uh, events like this and the Three Rivers Arts Festival uh, help to elevate the profile of women artists. And for that, we are very grateful. Uh, for everyone who's watching, you can see Rising Voices won now, the exhibition of the first Bennett Prize uh, finalists from now through August 8th at the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust 937 Gallery. And you can learn more about the Bennett Prize and Rising Voices, both rounds one and rounds Rounds one and two, two having just been awarded with the massive assistance of our juror, one of our jurors, uh, Patrick Moore of the Warhol Museum. And you can learn about this at uh, www.thebennettprize. It includes a definite article, thebennettprize.org. And uh, you can find out more about the uh, in-person exhibit in Pittsburgh at trustarts.org. Everybody, thank you for being with us.